It always baffles me how big tech companies like Google end up leaking so much sensitive data just via posting it to GitHub accidentally. Like these companies literally invest millions of dollars into their information security. They'll buy next gen firewalls that cost as much as a decent house and they'll spend hours of time training their employees on how to avoid phishing scams and all the usual attack vectors. But all of that just gets undermined by some employee with access to Google's GitHub account, I guess not understanding how Git commit works. They really are their own biggest threat model. Uh, so of course, what I'm talking about here is the recent leak that contained a lot of information about how Google's search algorithm works. Now, contrary to what some headlines are saying, it's not like there was a full source code leak of the algorithm. You know, if there was, then SEO bros would be having a field day with that. Um, but I think the main takeaway from this leak here, besides like maybe some small tweaks to make to your SEO strategy, is really just the fact that Google has been lying to our faces and to the government for years now about how their search engine really works. One of the big lies that was discovered is that Google never really did away with page rank and website authority scores. So for those of you who never dealt with online marketing or SEO stuff like 10 plus years ago, PageRank was this metric that Google used to publicly use, like you could actually see what your website's PageRank score was. Um, and this score was used to determine how important a web page was and thus how likely it was for that web page to pop up in a search result for searches that are related to the content of that website. So under that page rank system, the rank for any particular web page would be higher depending on the number of quality links elsewhere on the internet that reference that page. And there were a couple of other metrics that went into it as well, but we're just keeping things simple here. Um, you know, backlinks were the main factor, which is why if you look at old school SEO guides, like backlinks are the main thing that they're talking about. Oh, build your backlinks, build your backlinks. Um, so to just kind of break this down with an example, there's probably a million web pages out there on the internet that have a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. But whichever one gets referenced the most times by different blog sites and ideally like big blog sites that a lot of people are going to and also YouTube videos, big news sites, whatever, the more links there are referencing that particular web page, the more likely it is you'll see that web page when you Google a chocolate chip cookie recipe. But then around 2016, Google got rid of PageRank, um, or at least they removed the toolbars and the features that would let you actively be able to track your website's page rank so that you could make changes and try to improve your SEO and actually see like how changes to your website are improving how it's ranked um, by Google. And after Google made this removal, they said on multiple occasions that there was no longer any website authority score that would affect search results anymore. But in general, when we have something that's kind of like a site-wide score, then the current site-wide score applies to everything for that website. So from, from my point of view, we don't have anything like a website authority score. But if we did have something like that, or if we have, like when we're looking at, for example, like quality signals that are more site-wide, then that's something that applies across the whole website in the state that it's at now. So it's not the case that we would say, oh, five years ago, you had this score for your website, therefore your content will be rated like this forever. Uh, but rather we look at your website overall now and we apply the current score to all of your pages on, on the website. So clearly that was a lie. Now, a new somewhat disturbing detail that has been revealed from this leak is that Google has specific ranking categories for different kinds of websites. And one of these ranking categories is the small personal site. Okay, so Google is ranking these separately than how they're ranking uh, kind of the mainstream sites. And 
some people have been taking this um, as evidence that Google is demoting small personal sites like smaller blog sites in favor of bigger brands. Now, it's kind of hard for me to just confirm this based on the leak alone, but if you've been using Google, you've probably observed that most of the results you get for anything that you search are from major sites that don't always have the best information on them versus like a small personal blog about a very specific niche subject that somebody probably knows a whole lot about that you could get some you know good information from. And another disturbing realization for operators of smaller websites that are just getting started online is that Google actually does have a search sandbox for sites that can last for months in some cases after you've started your online business. So basically to explain this, when you launch a new website, there's a good chance that you aren't going to be included in the main Google index. Even if you did everything right, like you're targeting you know, a niche that's not oversaturated, um, maybe you paid good money to a developer who's also an SEO expert, or you're the good developer who's an SEO expert yourself, um, and maybe you also have a large social media following, right? So in theory, you can create good backlinks for your site as well, um, then you know, promote your site there. But still, when people go to Google, they won't find your site via general search results until your site has been aged for some non-specific amount of time. Now again, this sandbox is something that people just assumed has existed on Google for a long time, probably because people make new sites and they can't find it by searching unless you search for like the exact URL of your site. Um, and that's why we have threads like this from Twitter that exist. Well, technically it's not on Twitter anymore because uh, John Moo, a webmaster, tr uh, webmaster trends analyst at Google went and deleted this tweet, but this is the original thread that was saved on the internet archive where an Indian blogger was, I guess, trying to optimize his site or he created a new site to target a US audience, but he's in India. And so he was wondering uh, when the sandbox for this new website would expire. And John responded in bold, large font text, that there is no sandbox. Well, yeah, there clearly is. It says right here in your API documentation. So now we know that that was a lie. But the biggest lie, and the one that might actually get Google in trouble, because, you know, Google can lie to you and me all they want. But, you know, when you lie to the Department of Justice, when you tell a lie under oath, it can be a problem. I think they call that perjury. Uh, but this lie here that Google told under oath is about how Google uses clicks for search rankings. So Google said they don't use this data. They don't track your clicks. They don't track how long you spend on a page to, <laughs> to rank uh, results. And I feel like everyone knew that that was a lie, right? Like it's no coincidence that the most popular browser and the most popular search engine are under the umbrella of the same company. Um, but here this leak just confirms that not only is Google tracking your clicks, but they are tracking how much time you spend on a page, which is a direct contradiction to what Gary, one of Google's search analysts, said on Reddit that dwell time and CTR have nothing to do with page ranking. So sure, maybe Google doesn't call it dwell time internally within their documentation, but they are clearly tracking clicks and search results and time spent on a site after you click on it in order to determine the level of success that a search result had. Because yeah, common sense would tell you if somebody searched for something, clicked on a site, and then spent a lot of time on that website, they probably found what they were looking for. Um, but of course, there's some pretty disturbing privacy implications uh, for tracking these clicks because yeah, obviously Google's watching everything that you see on the internet. You know, it really makes me think that 
Harvesting click data to fuel their search engine was really the whole reason that Google developed the Chrome browser in the first place. Because you got to think, right? They don't make money directly off of the Chrome browser. It's free, right? Not, you know, free as in Libre software, but free as in it doesn't cost you any money. Um, and it's supposed to be so much better than all the other browsers that are out there on the web. So why would a for-profit company take the time to build something like Chrome? This makes me think that it was just to get more search metrics to, in theory, make their search engine better. But really, it's about dominating the search engine landscape so that Google can funnel as much traffic to their services as possible and then turn around and sell that traffic to online business owners. More people are visiting Google than any other website on the internet. For the most part, people are using Google to find new websites or products to buy. And if you pay Google some money, then I guess that's the best chances you're going to have to actually get more people to go to your website. And of course, scammers abuse this as well to get people to go to their scam sites that serve malware. So yeah, I guess it's no surprise that Google has been lying to us all this time. Anything's possible now that being evil is no longer the company's motto. But on the bright side, the information revealed in this leak will probably help some people with search engine optimization. So if you've got an online business and you're trying to improve your SEO to get more traffic to your site without just paying money to the Google Mafia, then this leak may be useful to you. I'll leave the uh, hex docs links that I've taken most of these screenshots from in the description of this video. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm. Buy my merch off of base.win and have a great rest of your day.